Luke here with catsandcarp.com and today we're demystifying hooks. In this video I'm going to talk to you about picking the right hook and what the different types of hooks are used for. I'm going to talk to you about hook sizes, types, brands, and a whole bunch more. And watch all the way to the end because I'm giving away tons of free gear and some awesome catfish and carp swag. Hooks are the most important piece of equipment you'll use to catch fish. Having the right hook is more important than your rod, your reel, your tackle, or even your line. If you don't have a lot of money, buy cheap rods and reels, but don't skimp on your hooks. First off, let's get the fishing hook lingo down. On a hook, you have the eye, the shank, the bend, the point, and the barb. You'll also hear the term hook offset. Hook offset is when the hook point is not parallel to the shank. The hook gap is another important feature. Hook gap is the distance between the shank and the point. The hook gauge refers to the thickness of the wire to use to make the hook. So a thicker, beefier hook has a thicker gauge. Hook sizes are not universal. Each manufacturer has its own sizes. So a Gamagatsu 8-aught hook is not the same size as a Mustad 8-aught hook or an Owner 8-aught hook. Additionally, different types of hooks have different sizes. So an 8-aught King Kale hook is a different size than an 8-aught Circle hook. But hook sizes are roughly equivalent across the types and manufacturers. There are two sizes of hooks that you need to be aware of. There are numbers and aughts. Numbers are smaller than aughts. For aughts, the larger the number, the bigger the hook. For number sizes, the larger the number, the smaller the hook. Let me show you some hook sizes to give you some perspective. This is a 20 aught hook. And this is a 14 aught hook. This is a 10 aught. An 8 aught a 6-aught, a 4-aught, and a 2-aught hook. This is a 1-aught, and then this is a number 1, and this is a number 2 hook. This is a number 4, a number 6, a number 10, a number 12, a number 14, a number 16, and a number 20 hook. Picking hook sizes is always a compromise. Smaller hooks are harder for the fish to detect. They are easier to set. They are affected less by current and can be cast further. And smaller hooks fit into a fish's mouth much easier. However, smaller hooks are easier for the fish to swallow, which can result in gut hooking. They are weaker. They tear out of a fish's mouth easier. And you'll end up catching smaller fish as well as big fish. I like to pick a hook that is bite size, like a donut hole. I want the hook and the bait to easily pop into the fish's mouth with one bite. So the size of your fish's mouth determines the size of the hook you want to use. There are tons of hook types, and I'm not going to cover them all, but here are some of the most common types. The simple J hook. This hook looks like a J. It's a basic hook that can be used for fishing with bait or even on lures. When a fish bites a J hook, you have to set the hook by jerking the rod aggressively. And I'll talk more about setting the hook later. The bait holder hook is a J hook with barbs along the shank to keep your bait from sliding off the hook as easily. As the name suggests, it's for fishing with bait. And like all J hooks, you have to set the hook. The Sawash hook is a J hook with a straight eye instead of a bent eye. And it's used for lure fishing as an alternative to treble hooks. You'll see this as a trailer on different types of bass lures, and you'll see it on sushi spoons and all sorts of deep water jigs. A lot of different people use this in places where treble hooks are either not allowed or not ideal. Aberdeen hooks are thin gauge J hooks with long shanks. They are usually used for fishing for small hook shy fish or when fishing small live minnows. The long shank also helps when fishing for small fish with sharp teeth like pufferfish or sheep's head. Circle hooks are different from J hooks because they do not have straight shanks and the hook point bends in towards the shank. Circle hooks are primarily for bait fishing and they don't have to be set like J hooks. 
So they are an ideal hook when you'll be leaving your rod in a rod holder while waiting for a fish to bite. Also, if you aren't confident in your ability to properly time your hook set, then use a circle hook. Circle hooks have to be twisted out of a fish's mouth, so once a fish is hooked, you lose fewer fish with a circle hook. Circle hooks are also less likely to result in a fish being hooked in the stomach than a J-hook. Octopus hooks are a cross between circle hooks and J-hooks. The shank is short and bent like a circle hook, but the point is straight like a J-hook. You should set an octopus hook like you do a J-hook, but the octopus hook is more forgiving if you don't set the hook right. Octopus hooks are good for small baits, and they are very strong for their size, so they work good on large, powerful fish with small mouths. I like to use them when salmon fishing. King Kale Hooks, or Super J Hooks. These are large bait hooks designed for fishing with live bait or large pieces of cut up fish. The strange bend in the hook prevents the live bait from coming off the hook and helps keep the hook point exposed by preventing the point from burying itself back into the fish. You don't want this to happen because that can result in lost fish. These hooks need to be set like J hooks. Shiner hooks. Shiner hooks are basically smaller versions of the king kale or kale hook or the super J hook. Shiner hooks are generally used for fishing for largemouth bass with live minnows or shiners. Treble hooks. Treble hooks are three J hooks that share a shank and an eye. They are great for keeping soft baits like salmon eggs and liver from coming off the hook, and they improve your hookup ratio on lures. But treble hooks can get snagged very easily and they can tear up a fish's mouth, which is bad if you plan on releasing the fish. There are also many laws affecting when and where you can use treble hooks. Worm hooks. These hooks are for fishing with soft plastic worms and other soft plastic baits, not for fishing with real worms. This is the type of hook that you need to set hard, just like other J hooks. Swim bait hooks are used to help keep your swim bait upright in the water and help it stay on the hook. They often have lead embedded in the shank of the hook, or they have a screw near the eye. These are all designed to keep the bait upright and on the hook. A swim bait hook needs to be set just like any other J hook. Jig hooks are J hooks with a 90 degree bend at the eye. They are designed to swim point side up so that if you drag the hook over a sunken log or bounce it across rocks, the point is less likely to catch and be snagged. Some J hooks are weighted. These hooks can be used with soft plastic lures or with baits like dead minnows. Like all J hooks, you need to set a jig hook. Weedless hooks are, as the name suggests, for fishing around weeds. Weedless hooks have wires or bristles that protect the hook point from catching on weeds. When a fish bites a hook, the guard gives way and the hook point is exposed. This hook is perfect for fishing in grass or thick weedy vegetation, but you have to set the hook more aggressively to compensate for the guard. These hooks can be used with bait or lures. Punch bait and stink bait hooks come in a lot of varieties. These hooks are usually treble hooks, but they are all designed to grip soft gooey baits. Some use hairs, some use textured plastics, others have little pouches that can be filled with stinky gooey baits. If you fish with punch baits, stink baits, dough baits, or gels, you may want to use these types of hooks. Okay, I talked a lot about hook set, so let me explain what that means. Hook set is when you try to drive the hook point deeper into the fish's mouth. You want the hook to sink in to the fish's flesh past the barb to decrease the chances of the fish spitting out the hook. With J hooks, you reel up all the slack and then jerk the rod tip up as high as you can to try to set that hook into the fish's mouth. Sometimes you'll even run backwards or take a step backwards to pull more line. With circle hooks, you simply wait until the fish is on the hook then you reel in all the slack line until the rod bends over. Then you lift the rod up and fight the fish. When fish have hard mouths like pike, gar, or tarpon, you really have to set the hook hard. You'll see professional bass fishermen set the hooks extremely aggressively. Fish with softer mouths like carp, crappie, or trout don't have those hard mouths and so you can set with much less force. And you have to be more careful because if you set too hard, you can tear the hook right out of the fish's mouth. The sharper and smaller your hook, the less force it takes to set the hook. So choosing the right hook can really affect your hook set. High quality hooks have sharp, durable points. Good hooks are also strong, but can flex without breaking or becoming bent. 
Hooks range in price from a dollar for a dozen to a dollar a piece. Most of the time, you get what you pay for. Gamagatsu, Mustad, and Owner are some of the best hook brands that are easy to find. Eagle Claw is one of the most affordable brands, but their hooks are definitely lower quality. I tend to use cheaper brand hooks for catching bait and having fun with my kids, but when I'm fishing for big fish, I use the best hooks money can buy. Rust, snags, and normal wear and tear will dull your hooks. A $10 jeweler's eye can reveal when it's time to retire a hook. With experience, you can feel when a hook point is dull. If you want, you can sharpen your hooks. Metal sandpaper or sharpening stones can touch up a hook point fairly quickly. When you bait a hook, you want the bait to be as secure as possible so that it won't fall off the hook while casting. But you also want no bait on the hook point or barb. If you cover up the hook point or barb with bait, you'll lose more fish and you'll gut hook more fish. There are a number of products and techniques that can help secure your bait without interfering with the hook point. Bait thread is a really great cheap option. Egg loop knots are a really awesome way to snell a hook that'll also secure your bait to the shank. And bait buttons can be really helpful, especially when fishing with live bait or large cut bait. If you're getting lots of bites, but not getting hooked up, you're probably using hooks or baits that are too big. Smaller fish are biting your lure or your bait, but the setup is so big that they are missing the hook point. If you're getting tons of bites but no fish, switch to progressively smaller hooks and smaller baits or lures until you catch whatever is biting your hook. If you're hooking fish and fighting them, but then the hook comes out when you pull the hardest, this probably means the hook is tearing out. Sometimes hooks tear out just because of bad luck of where the hook set up in the fish's mouth. But if your hooks are tearing out frequently, then two things could be causing them to tear out. Either A, you're setting the reel drag too high and fighting the fish too aggressively, which causes the hook to tear out, or B, you're using too small of a hook. And by too small of a hook, I mean that the hook gap is too small. If the hook gauge is also very thin, this increases the chances that the hook can tear out of the fish's mouth. If you are hooking fish briefly, but they are spitting the hook quickly, or whenever there's any slack in the line, they're getting off the hook, then you're having a problem with your hook set. A sharper, smaller hook will improve that. Also, better hook setting techniques can also really help. And remember, if you lose a fish while it's being netted by your friend, it's always, always, always your friend's fault. Blame them. Well, I hope this taught you a thing or two about hooks. And remember, before you go out and buy the latest and greatest fishing rod, make sure you're using high quality hooks. Using the right hook will put more fish on the bank than any other piece of equipment you can buy. If you like this video, check out some of our other great videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, including our videos about my 10 favorite fishing rigs, my favorite fishing knots, videos explaining the pros and cons of bait casting reels versus spinning reels, and our rod review videos. I'll put links in the description to each of these videos. If you like what you see, click subscribe for multiple videos every week. Thanks for watching. Oh, before I forget, I also promised that I would announce the winner of the Fishing Bell and Catfish and Carp bumper sticker giveaway from last week. Mason Wilkin is the winner. He correctly guessed that Tommy was wearing 59 fishing bells. So congratulations, Mason Wilkin. And I also promised you that I'd be giving away tons of fishing hooks and some more bumper stickers. So I've got about 20, 30 bucks worth of Gamakatsu hooks here. And if you wanna win, all you have to do is one, Click subscribe to the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Share this video on any social media platform or forum or website. And three, leave a comment in the comment section of this video guessing how many species of animals have attacked me in my life. It's a specific number and it's a large number. Anyway, I'll announce the winner one week from today and I'll let you choose which types of hooks you want. I have a huge freaking bag of brand new Gamagatsu hooks and owners and whatever. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get you hooked up and get you some of these super awesome catfish and carb bumper stickers. If you want to get more catfish and carb hoodies, t-shirts, gear, whatever, I'll put a link in the description as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.